Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Hello, I'm Shabir Ali for Let the Quran Speak with another book review. And today I'm going to review this book. Now you can't read the title because it's, uh, it's uh, covered in, in plastic and I have to explain why this is covered in plastic. So that goes back to my childhood days. Uh, when I was a schoolboy, um, we, we used to use the textbooks and, uh, and they had to be handed down to the next uh, batch of students the following year. And so when we used the textbooks, we had to be careful to preserve them in the best way possible. And that meant also papering over uh, the cover. And uh, so I, that's been a habit that's been left with me. I've been papering over and, and using plastic even to cover uh, my books, even as an adult. So many of the books I've reviewed in this series of reviews uh, have had plastic covers and I've had to take them off uh, before doing the review. In this case, I decided to show you this one because this one is a unique cover. You see, the, the cover of this one is not an ordinary piece of plastic. This actually uh, is uh, cut out from the bag uh, that was used uh, to, to bag this, this purchase. When I, when I bought it uh, many, many uh, decades ago, actually. And uh, it's still on here. So I'm gonna unwrap it uh, for you so you can see this uh, cover. And uh, you know something about my life experience and what uh, makes me um, tick. Well, of course, the, the cover might be ruined and by the time I take it out here, uh, but I think it's well worth uh, the effort of showing you this, this cover. And, um, and to show you, you know, what I've been doing with my books all my life. Nowadays, I don't uh, bother to cover the books so much because you know what? I've, I have so many books now that uh, eventually I found it time consuming and tedious uh, to be covering every book. Soon as I get the book, uh, nowadays, I just want to delve right into it and, and read it uh, rather than to take time to cover it. And uh, so I've entered, you can say, a new phase in my life in which I'm no longer uh, covering the book. So there, there it is. That was the original bag. You see, it was Cameron's Bible Bookstores, uh, providing gifts to shape a lifetime. And um, I, I cut out parts of it and used that to uh, wrap my book. Talk about recycling. Yeah, and this was uh, decades ago when recycling was not such a, uh, a popular um, uh, uh, concept. So this is how the book looks uh, now with its dust jacket. The Interpreter's One Volume Commentary on the Bible, uh, edited by Charles uh, Lehman. And uh, this is published by Abingdon, people who publish Bibles and uh, other such material. Now, why do you need a commentary on the Bible? You need a commentary on the Bible because, uh, as I've done in the previous review, I've explained that uh, sometimes you need to check more details. And uh, you can find that in a, in, a, in a volume that contains the Bible, plus it's uh, commentary. Yes, that's good. But sometimes you need even more detail than that. And uh, so you need to have the Bible on one hand and your commentary on another hand. Well, not so much on the hand because this is a very hefty volume, but you know, de on the desk, so, uh, side by side, you're reading the Bible and then you're consulting a commentary uh, such as this one. Now, this one is a particularly good commentary, and I found myself referring to it again and again. One of the issues uh, that require commentary is uh, the ending of Mark's gospel. Mark's gospel ends with chapter 16, verse number 8 in the, the most uh, reliable early manuscripts of the Bible. But some of the manuscripts have uh, an addition, which is called the longer addition uh, to Mark's gospel, which consists of 12 verses, verses 9 to 20. And uh, some have uh, just a short edition, uh, which is a kind of a summary, and that is referred to as the short edition to Mark. Now, why this long and short uh, edition? In some, some manuscripts have the one, some have the other, some combine the two. Um, now, uh, uh, Christian scholars go to work at this, and uh, an interesting suggestion that is found here, quite uniquely in this, uh, in this uh, volume, uh, is that uh, maybe uh, someone tore off the original ending of Mark's gospel. Because the question is, how did Mark end the way he ended with saying that the women, having visited the tomb of Jesus, uh, found it to be empty and they uh, fled from the tomb in fear, saying nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Uh, so is that how Mark intended to end his gospel? Well, the, the people who... Um, uh, put the additions in, the longer edition on the one hand, the shorter edition on the other hand, 
obviously did not feel that Mark's ending uh, ended on an appropriate note. They thought something more needs to be said. Well, what needs to be said? From a later Christian point of view, uh, we need to hear the stories which are found in the other Gospels to the effect that Jesus appeared to his disciples again, now alive, and uh, his disciples uh, even touched him and uh, verified that this was the same Jesus, and they now believe that he had resurrected from the dead. The absence of this in Mark's Gospel is a bit of a puzzle. Why would Mark write a Gospel and not write all these beautiful stories? Did he not know the stories? Did he know some alternative stories? Uh, what did he write? Uh, and, and why does the gospel end like this? With this note that the women said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. It doesn't seem like a happy ending uh, for the story of Jesus. Uh, so uh, did he write something more? Well, this uh, commentary suggests that it's possible that he wrote something more, but whatever he wrote was not palatable uh, to some later people. And so they deliberately tore off that original ending, leaving this truncated version, uh, which needed to be supplemented uh, by the additions which we have talked about, the longer ending and the shorter ending. In my, 2000, my year 2000 debate in Atlanta, um, I actually uh, referred to that uh, uh, statement within this uh, Interpreter's One Volume Commentary on the Bible. I think it's a very important statement. And uh, a, this Bible has thus proven to be, this uh, commentary on the Bible has thus proven to me uh, to be very uh, useful. Another uh, very important passage that I've uh, found a uh, need to refer to again and again uh, is uh, it, the Psalms, Psalm 16 in particular. Psalm 16 is uh, about a hero, or we can say a, a man of God, who is rescued by God. And uh, verses number uh, six, uh, seven to eight in Psalm 16 uh, speaks about this uh, man. And verses nine to 12 uh, says, uh, we learned this, uh, the, the commentary here tells us that uh, the, the psalmist, uh, this uh, man of God, was near death and the Lord rescued him from Sheol or, uh, and the pit, that is the underworld. And then it uh, it says further, no doctrine of resurrection is involved. So that's about the psalmist, the hero of the Psalms. And uh, it's interesting that in the New Testament, in Acts of the Apostles in chapter 2, for example, uh, Peter and uh, other disciples of Jesus are referring back to Jesus uh, as uh, using the same words from this psalm, as if what happened to Jesus is the same thing that happened to this individual. But notice what happened to this individual is that the individual came close to death, but didn't actually die. This is a person who had a close brush with death, and then he was rescued. So in that case, uh, that uh, for a Muslim is interesting because Muslims uh, have maintained that uh, Jesus was not killed by his enemies because the Quran says in Surah 4 verse 157, they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. So one might argue on the basis of this, that uh, it uh, is possible that Jesus appeared to be dead, uh, but he wasn't actually quite dead. He came close to death, but this was not about resurrection from the dead. It's about God rescuing a man who was close to death after being attacked by his enemies. So altogether, with these observations, I would conclude by saying, that this is a very useful uh, commentary on the Bible, the Interpreter's One Volume Commentary on the Bible by Charles Lehman as the editor, a Bingdon uh, uh, Press. And I have uh, found that this book has actually changed my life, and I hope that it will have an impact on yours as well. Perhaps it may even change your life. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. You can change someone's life this Ramadan. Donate as much or as little as you can and be part of our project to share the message of Islam to people across the globe. Visit Quranspeaks.com and donate. Your contribution is zakat eligible and tax deductible. May God keep you safe and healthy. May God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always.